This particular video is about how you can use Codex CLI. Now you have a Git repository. Your working directory is this. Post conduct a code review. So up till now, we've added tests to our repository. We have updated the readme. We have reviewed our code twice. We have called in for, you know, uh, checks around vulnerability and, you know, efficiency. Blown away. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video within the Generative AI tool series. And in this video, we'll be talking about OpenAI's newly released Codex CLI. So I've said this in my previous videos, like 2025 and 2026 are going to be the years of agents. This is the year or the agentic era, as they're calling it, or the year where agentic frameworks become popular, where we can leverage these agents to build multi-agent systems. So the possibilities are endless. But in this particular video, while exploring this tool, I want you guys to appreciate the fact that up till now, uh, we're getting smart agents and they're becoming more accessible for us developers. So up till now, you might have seen or you might have heard about agents making their place within VS Code. For example, I have like three different agents installed in my VS Code right now. So I'm using GitHub Copilot because it's free. Why not? I have Gemini which I can use to generate new code, fix errors, explain this. If you have a particular code snippet, of course, generate unit test cases. You can also access uh, Gemini from right here in a proper chat mode. The most popular or the most talked about agent has been continue.dev. And uh, I'm using CodeStrel by Mistral over here, and you can hook up any uh, different LLM you want, like Cloud 3.5, Sonnet, GPT-4, and there have been other agents as well, like, you know, AWS, Amazon Q. So this is here. So I've, so I've actually done a whole video on, you know, comparing GitHub Copilot, uh, Amazon Q, and Mistral's CodeStrel. So I'm going to hook the video up into the cards. If you're interested, go and watch it. But what if... What if you don't have to use these assistants? So what if you can use some bits and pieces of these code agents within your terminal? What if you're a hardcore terminal user? What if you're a Linux user, right? This particular video is about how you can use Codex CLI. And I have a particular example. So here's a repository and I'm calling it the worst repository ever. And I'm going to demonstrate Codex CLI over this particular repository. So we'll generate new code, we'll write test cases, we'll review the existing code, and we'll also try to sort of leverage the OCR capabilities provided by uh, the LLMs to actually translate a picture to code. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, the very first thing I'm gonna do is paste the command npm install g. I hope you can see it, I can still sort of zoom it in so npm install g opening a codex i'm gonna hit install i've already installed it but i just want you guys to go through the process all right so once your package is installed all you have to do is type in codex if you hit enter you're gonna run into this error which says you are missing an OpenAI key for that you would have to run a command which says export OpenAI api key and you'll have to uh, open a key, all caps. And here you'll be putting your open AI key. And I'm not gonna put mine because of the obvious reasons, but once you hit enter, this error will be resolved. All right, once you're done, all you have to do is type in codex, and this is the interface of open AI codex. But as you guys can see the warning, it can be dangerous to run a coding agent outside a Git repository in case there are changes that you may reward. So what it means is like whatever code base you touch alongside Codex, it should be a Git repository. It should have some sort of a version control to it. Otherwise, uh, because Codex has a lot of different modes in which it can even, you know, fix stuff by itself. But if you don't have version control, your, your version of code can be lost. So in this case, uh, so my main rep uh, main directory, which happens to be users of SCOMRON, is not a Git repo. So I'm going to say no. 
worst repository ever. The reason being is that I've actually written the worst code ever. So let me walk you through it. So this is a fast API, uh, you know, a very lean version of fast API. So all I'm doing is initializing my fast API. This happens to be my array. And all I'm doing is I have two endpoints. Uh, this one just says, hello, welcome to the worst fast API application. But the other one, it sends in item ID. So I just want to perform some kind of search. So item ID uh, should be a string and I'm also sending in this, which happens to be a query. So what it does, it actually, so this is a very inefficient way to sort of search something. So first, what it does is it would find the item ID and break the loop. And then it would run the loop again to query this which is a bit inefficient. And I just want to see if Codex can cache this, fix this and give me a more uh, efficient solution, right? So let's try to do that. Firstly, let's ask some basic questions to uh, Codex. So, so once, so here you go. Now you see the difference. Now you have a Git repository. Your working directory is this and the uh, model which we'll be using alongside Codex is O4 Mini and approval say suggest. So let me explain what this means. So there are a few modes to Codex which are called approval mode. So suggest is by default. So what it does, it just reads file and that's that's the best it will do. It will ask you for, you know, uh, any changes that it would make. It would ask for your approval before running any command and making any change. So auto edit is more like read and write files automatically. Uh, still ask before running uh, shell commands. And full auto is read, write, and execute commands autonomously into a sandbox, network disabled, and you can grab a cup of coffee while it does that. So you can use these modes, you can switch between these modes, and I think there is a very simple command. So all you have to do type in codex auto edit or codex full auto to actually switch between them. So yeah, so let's go ahead. Firstly, I'm just going to ask a few questions to codex to sort of explain what this code base does. So all I have to do, uh, so you see, I'm, I just hit tabs and there are a few suggestions like explain this code base to me, fix any build errors. So we're going to try one, uh, you know, some of these one by one. So it's thinking and this will be your interface. Also, I'm hearing good things about, you know, uh, over mini. So fingers crossed. Okay, so we have some response. So here's a quick high level overview of what's in the repo. So placeholder description that that's right. I just have this in my readme, so nothing in there. As it just contain a picture, PNG, we'll come back to it later. Server, a tiny, fast API application, get route, and looks up into the memory, in memory list of sample items. If you pass an optional parameter queue, it also does a simple text filter. To run, it, run it locally, all you have to do is type in this. So, so that's the level of, you know, stuff that um, uh, we can expect here. Perfect. So let's start again. What I wanted to do is to review server.py uh, conduct a code review. So let's be a bit verbose. Conduct a code review for server.py. Let's see. Let me pull this up a bit. So you see, when I cleared the context and when I start to type again, it actually is going through the repository once again. So to avoid doing that, you should probably, you know, not use the clear command to reset uh, because it will be faster the next time. Okay, we have a few suggestions and it's quite a lot. Here's a focused review, missing import, HTTP execution. Okay, thank you so much. Wrong variable in filter loop. So inside if, so I mean, this is the level of details that you can get. You can assign result i and then do result filter. Exactly. So this is something 
that should have been the right approach. So instead of, you know, doing these two separately, you could just do it in one go. So, so this is what I was trying to imply that, you know, um, this should be the case. Okay, what if I want to write a few test cases? Write test cases for server.py. Okay, no, first fix all the issues in the file. All right, so we have some new piece of code. So it slashed everything and it added a new block, which says, okay, so the filtering part is still there, but okay, let's go ahead and hit enter. So that's how you can just, you know, uh, shell command allow. Nope, keep going on. There we go. This is our new piece of code. But let's go ahead and further refine it by asking for, you know, uh, building up a more efficient solution. I've applied the following fixes. Add missing import is fine. Add an optional for the query pram type hint. So, okay, this is the one. And rename the loop variable i to entry for clarity. Copied the mashed item result so we don't mutate the global list cool fix the typo da, 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 instead of undefined item okay can you make the filtering and search part more efficient all right so we have some bits of new code use cached search to filter entries cool this is what we needed. So we have um, HTTP exception import, which wasn't done previously right here. So cool, this, and it has also added a cache layer as well in terms of search row entry. Cool. And then let's try to do some more bits of stuff. Let me go ahead and ask it to, Update. Well, readme.md file. Oh, cool. So I think we have a new readme file which has more bits of, let's see what it has. So, okay. That's quite a lot of detail. Perfect. So let's go ahead and ask a few more things. Okay, stop. So a clear project description, installation and run instructions, details about two endpoints, notes on implementation and future improvements. Perfect. So uh, write test cases for server.py. There we go. All right. Let's see, I'm expecting some good stuff here. Yes, I need to make a new directory, which is around texts. And we have one. And while so it has created the, the directory, and I think that's creating the test file. Okay, yes. So this is basically the suggest mode. A lot of things would change if we would switch between the other modes. So I think it went along with running the error. So it's doing all that by itself. So all right, so I've added comprehensive PyTest based tests in test server that covers root endpoints, item retrieval by ID, case insensitive substring filtering with various queries this is amazing and it and there we go eight passed so eight test passed. so you so this is the experience that i was talking about you can do so much by just being into the terminal and i don't i didn't i didn't swipe around into windows i didn't you know click any agent icons i didn't do this i didn't have to you know 
traverse through different, you know, coding agents within my VS Studio. I'm just staying within my terminal and I'm just, as they say, vibing, right? So this is cool. So up till now, we've added tests to our repository. We have updated the readme. We have reviewed our code twice. We have called in for, you know, uh, checks around vulnerability and, you know, efficiency. Blown away. Alrighty, so this was fun. I think it's a fun new tool from OpenAI, which you can leverage in your daily workflow. So I think it would definitely boost up your productivity. Given that Ofer Mini is really handy and really smart and really, you know, uh, pocket size. Uh, and if you have access to Ofer Mini through your terminal, what else do you need? Do let me know what you guys think about the experience and whether you would be using Codex CLI in the near future. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.